Hello VC, this is the Big Star 1000 and today I am in the company of Mr. Christian Mizzy who you might know on the Facebook page. Uh, what's your name? No, that's it. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Christian. And uh, we're drinking rum. Big time. Cheers VC. <laughs> How's the rum? Top notch. <sighs> Top notch, that's, Top my, notch, that's, my, that's my phrase. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just kind of spirit of the moment. Um, we're, um, we're having a, kind of a dinner party. Well, it's not dinner, it's lunch party. And we're eating, uh, let's talk about it because I talk well, about we're it. We're eating a, a raclette, which is a, uh, a Swiss, it's a mountain dish, I think from the north, north part of France and, and part of Switzerland. And um, it's basically roasted cheese. Poured on the top of potato, steamed potato, served with uh, an array of deli meats and and uh, seriously good wine. That's right, basically. So we're almost asleep. <laughs> That's right. So you might have seen Christian on the Box Hill Fair video, uh, which I posted uh, yesterday. Uh, Champsan also uh, posted a video with you on. And uh, basically, I've known Christian for how many years? Four, five years? Yeah, five years. Five yeah. years. Yeah. We work at the same place and we connected on music, basically. And uh, the very first record that I uh, that I put in Christian's hand was uh, Ethiopian Jazz, you know, <laughs> a compilation of Ethiopian Jazz. And from then on, it's been a, a wild ride of records and more and more, more and more records, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it? I've learned a and, lot. And so uh, we usually do sessions every what? Yeah. Every every sort of once a month at least, and yeah. But basically, you know, we have a have a thing, you know, catching up at school each day and talking about, um, you know, what came in the mail and you know what did you buy, what did you buy this weekend, sort of thing. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. So this afternoon we played a few records, uh, just have 10, 12 records there. And when Christian arrived uh, for lunch, I was playing. Uh, this record. So, what do you think? Oh, it's awesome. It's a, um, it's a sort of a jazz, an African sort of influenced jazz record. Although it's uh, recorded in Stockholm, is that right? Sweden, yes. Sweden, um, 1971. But uh, it was it. It's part of the Wax Poetics um, reissues. Yes, it's one of the reissues from Wax Poetics here, and he was uh, a, a bongo player, drummer percussionist, you would say, Melvin Price. It's a well-known record <coughs> in the VC, I'm guessing. I mean, uh, Melvin Price. Yeah, it's a very cool record. It's a cool record. Mm. The next record that I put on after this, um, I would normally show in my next vinyl finds, but I, I you know, well, you get a, an exclusive. Also kind of a, a VC, kind of a darling kind of record, Hum Dono, by the fantastic Joe Harriet and Amanda the Silva. Who you may know, uh, British jazz classic record. Um, uh, Joe Harriet uh, played with John Meyer, you know, Indo jazz fusions. Uh, Amanda da Silva, you might know Cosmic Cosmic Eye, which was you've got yeah, the Cosmic yeah, Eye Cosmic record, Eye, yeah. yeah, Cosmic Eye top record. Uh, Indo jazz fusion, just really absolutely uh, fantastic, and uh, just just this is comes. Highly recommended. I just couldn't recommend a record any higher than this, and uh, I think you enjoyed it, didn't you? Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Very, very cool record. Okay, next, you want to talk about the next record we played? Well, uh, the next record we played is a CD. Oh, there we go. Talk Talk. Laughing Stock. Um, I think it's their third, fourth, fourth record. Um, Talk Talk. Fifth, actually. Fifth, is it? Yeah, oh, it's the last yeah. record, yeah. Last one. Yeah. Um, Talk Talk is a band that I have only recently really sort of gotten into. I've had a couple of their early records for quite a while, but I just recently bought a copy of um, Spirit of Eden, which blew me away. Like, it's honestly one of the best one of the best records I've heard for a long time, and it's really changed. So when I came over today, I asked him if he had the... Laughing Stock record, and he put it on for me, and it's also, you know, it's up there with oh, yeah. with the best of it. It's fantastic, you know. It's a pro. It's the prototype for for post rock, really. Um, spacious, 
elegant, classy, all of these, all of these words, you know, Mark Hollis, what a genius. What yes, a genius. Absolutely. So this is a record from 1990, uh, 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 Laughing Stock. And um, I think it follows much on the steps of uh, Spirit of Aid and sort of tries to improve a bit on it. But in my personal opinion, VC, and if you're watching this, um, I think Spirit of Eden is still the best object record I'm t t in my mind, but you know I may be wrong. But this is this comes highly recommended nonetheless. Laughing stock. Um, and then uh, I've shown this in my in one of my recent vinyl finds. This is Sadaka, uh, basically um, sort of a spiritual soul jazz band from Oakland, California. Uh, and um, we've got Fender Rhodes and sort of kind of female soulful vocals, really just a dynamic record, really cool. Uh, Jazzman Records, limited to a thousand copies, don't sleep, people. This is really an excellent record. Uh, and I'm always sold with uh, Sunset covers. Mm, I just, yes. I'm a sucker for sunset covers. <laughs> yes. I just see sunset covers. And go, oh, I've got to buy this. Yeah. Even though it's a shit record sometimes. You know. Stratosphere. <laughs> no, Stratosphere. Stratosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not a shit record. No, yeah. but it's not awesome. It's it's <laughs> the cover is awesome. It's eighty percent awesome. Yeah. You know, but this is more than eighty percent awesome. So I've talked about Sadaka. Yeah. Then uh, we put a bit of. Uh, you, you tell us. <laughs> Francois Robert from France. Yes. Um, this is this is serious. This is serious music. This is a, a, a double bass player uh, who plays with a bow um, and accompanied with. I think is, does he play it himself? Uh, the with with some with some really sort of basic percussion. Yeah, no, it's not him. He's, he's uh, another guy. He's with he's with people. So on a par with with something like Henri Texier, or this is one of these really special records. Machine Aim, or <coughs> what a great label! It's a beautiful record. For, uh, Fred should probably. Are you Fred on this, or are you Big One Thousand? I'm Fred. I'm you can okay. Fred, uh, Fred. He should probably name. tell you more about how. Oh, I have because it's. I, I have. I have in, a, in, a pre, in previous. Years. I tend to leave it in the middle because oh, it's yeah, almost okay. impossible to to oh, get it out. Okay. You know, but um, um, François Rabat, yeah, um, super, super, super duper uh, bass player. It is just extraordinary. Uh, plays with a bow, uh, which is which is really really. But it's really cool. dark and. Deep and haunting and trancy a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong word because people are going to get mixed up. But basically, it's just a really haunting. Maybe sort of trance inducing. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> that could be the rum. Well, the, the rum is trance inducing. <laughs> this is rum from Mauritius, people. Mauritius. Where <laughs> I uh, was uh, at recently, and I'm sharing the experience with the boy Mizzy here. Is he's digging it? Digging it. Okay, next. Tell us. Yeah, Baba, Barbara, <laughs> La Louve. <laughs> yeah, another French record. Uh, a French singer from, um, well, from this one's from 1973, but I think she was, uh, she was earlier than that. She was during the 60s. Is that right? Well, yeah, 50s, 60s, 60s, 70s. She's you were sort of um, kind of classic kind of uh, uh, French chanson singer. Kind of, you know, she was the, the the sort of more modern version of of Edith Piaf. Except that on this record, what did we hear? What did we hear? We heard some really groovy sort of electric guitar kind of... Oh, yeah, big time. It was like a... <laughs> He's fucked. <laughs> it was like a... I um, played my best records and he goes... Oh, it was like yeah, a, a psychedelic uh, record meets, you know, something like... Uh, yeah, basically like a... Mm. Like a David Axelrod with a... You know, it's like a library... Meets chanson record, but not fully. Just yeah. a couple of tracks, and the tracks that he played were just phenomenal. And the uh, the, the person in question is uh, William Scheller. So this guy here, William Scheller, was the uh, orchestrator for this for this uh, record. This yeah. guy here, uh, William Scheller, is a French 
singer-songwriter, very, very famous in France, a household name, not an asshole name. <laughs> <laughs> you can mispronounce it very, really, really easily. And a household name, William, uh, uh, William Shelley, as we would see in French. Um, he, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 William Shelley, uh, yeah, uh, it's such a wanky. Um, um, his very first record, this is a very, 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 very first record of William Shelley. He put this out in 1971, uh, 72, sorry, written in 70 and released in 72. This was a psychedelic mass that he wrote for two of his friends who were getting married. Released to 200 copies, then... To each other. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, re released to 200 copies originally and pressed to about 2,000 copies, including a later repress. Impossible to find under, I mean, two, three hundred euros minimum. I've seen it once on vinyl. I was very greedy with envy. So basically, this guy, William Scheller, did the orchestrations on this record, which is why this record is so fucking dope, people. That's why. Done by Baba Records. If you're watching this video and you, you, you're just walking into your local thrift store and you find one of the Baba Records, it's not this one done by. You this might. Is the one. Be disappointed. This is right. This plus this equals genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. You can talk about this. You know this. Well, I have a copy of this record. One of my uh, one of my favorite post punk records. Um, I don't have this version, although um, the other version that I have is uh, is a, a different pressing, and it's without the it's without one of the tracks. So, yeah, the reward um, is missing. I think. Fred put this on this afternoon just to, you know, just to um, make a, a good segue, I think. And because it's brilliant. It's a brilliant post-punk record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this, though. You yeah. know this record already. Yes, I'm sure. that's right. If but you don't, you're a fuck remedy it. that. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> go and get it. This is, this is what it. alcohol makes me do. <laughs> if you don't know this record, you're a fuckwit. Okay. This one. This one. <laughs> <laughs> This is an interesting story. Uh, uh, tell the story. Many, many years ago. Before, many years well, ago. Basically, I, I used to collect a lot of CDs. And uh, in my collection, I had about, about probably 50 records. And I only had those records because basically every now and again, I'd go to op shops, thrift stores, and pick up you know something that looked a little bit interesting and I'd take it home. But the thing is, I didn't even have a record player. So I just kept them, you know, in the, in the garage. In the garage. In the garage. Unloved. <laughs> Unloved, can I say? Unloved. <laughs> Unloved. Which is why. Totally dusty, what? totally sleeveless, oh. everything. And um, one, one afternoon, uh, I meet this guy and, and, and eventually, you know, we start hanging out and he comes over to my place and um, I'm showing off my CD collection. <laughs> and uh, he comes out, you know, and I was showing him something. I can't remember what I was showing him in the garage. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe my guitars or something. And anyway, he's going through this very small the stack dead of records. St stashed in the corner. That's his right. garage. In that stack. Roger Thwaites. <laughs> this guy. Roger Thwaites. Now, Roger Thwaites, to me, back then, was just nothing, really. And nobody. I thought you, I think you used to call him <laughs> Roger Twat. <laughs> Basically, this turned out to be once once Fred took it home and come into school the next day because I gave it to him. I didn't even think anything of it. And then he came in the next day and said, "This record is fucking awesome." <laughs> like, oh, I'm glad you like it. That's cool. Anyway, he he raved about it for a little bit, and I realised then, <laughs> don't give shit away until you've played it. So it was a it was an you expensive. Know it's a table, isn't it? <laughs> It was an expensive lesson, but I'm glad. I'm glad it went to my buddy. Anyway, I mean, uh, look, I can come over here and play it anytime. Uh, it's one of those Aussie collectible records. Um, the the next two. This is his uh, first record. The next two are not worth looking at. No. This this one's the one. Basically, there's a couple of tracks on it that are really cool. Singer songwriter psychedelic meets uh, sort of you know um, chamber baroque. Folk sort of thing. You know? There you go. Um, and it's it's good stuff. Um, I'm not going to chase it down. I, I'd just come over here and play it every now yeah. and again. 
Uh, it's it, it it. But it's good. It's, it's a it, good story. It's got it's got two or three really great tracks, and it, it's one of these sort of off kilter kind of records, you know. Uh, I'll talk about the next one. Um, uh, yes, let's let's talk about the next one. Triangle, French uh, progressive uh, band, very well known record. In if you're into French prog, what can I say? Um, nothing much. It's just a great record, uh, French prog record. Really, really. Uh, this is on Pate Marconi uh, from 1972, I think, or three or something, and everybody. Uh, who likes French prog knows this this amazing sort of piano on fire kind of cover. It's an interesting story about this. I had to order two of these to get one. The first one got lost in the mail. Never, I never received it. Never ever received. It. Moving right along, here is one of my favorite records. You know, <laughs> and I'm not ashamed. Anthony Kemploin, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Kemploin, you can laugh at me. But this is a Britain record, Asia, Silly Dan. I'm not going to say very much more about it. Genius. And I did play you a track called Black Cow. Black Cow, yeah. Which was not was at least very quite it's groovy. funky. It's a groovy, it's a groovy track. track. I tried to convert him to the religion of uh, Asia, but I don't think it worked very well. He's still an atheist. <laughs> um, I will move on. I'm Maybe not going to talk about Steely Dan no, very we long. Know, we know this one. Um, next... I think this is a little bit out of order because I think we played this record before, but we did play this uh, Polnareff's uh, record, classic, one of the top 10 French progressive pop records. Did you, what did you think? Oh, I enjoyed it? it. I enjoyed it very much. I haven't heard this record before today. We played a couple of tracks. Um, I've got I've got the other one. Um, I've got another Polar Earth record, but this is on AZ, AZ <coughs> records. Yeah. Yeah. Michel Polar again is a household name in France. He he was uh, he was a sort of a prodigy, you know, a genius. Uh, he um, you know got kicked out by his parents out of home because he wanted to be a pop musician, and they wanted him to be an architect or something like. that or an engineer, and he told them to basically fuck off and just went to live on the street, and uh, he was spotted, he was telling the spot, and basically just never looked back. Mm. Except that now he's a freak, he's into Kung Fu, and lives in America, in Hollywood or something. He's a fucking nutter. Great music. Great. Awesome musician, yeah. awesome songwriter. What's the, next, what's the next thing? <clears throat> oh, the next thing is cool. <clears throat> show this in my... No, I haven't yet. I'm going to show... This is like new vine, new finds. I was I was showing Mizzy this cool record, the Wild Classical Musical uh, Music Ensemble. So what did I say about this? This is a record that was uh, recorded by. What's the word? A bunch of. <laughs> you are going to say retarded, which is, which is politically incorrect to the max. Handica mentally handicapped. S special needs people. Mentally handicapped mentally people. Mentally handicapped, handicapped people, yeah, right. that's right. Which sounds like Sonic Youth jamming with the residents, jamming with the boredoms, <laughs> jamming with Devo, <laughs> you know, on crack. Okay. That's right. It's kind of... It's, uh, a, it's awesome. It's really good. It's really worth checking out. Um, it's a really interesting artifact. And it's it's good music. It's really genuinely good music. Um, I was telling uh, Christian about uh, the... Art movement, art brute, yeah, art brute, which is um, outsider art basically, and this is a really good example of musical art brute. Um, if you want to look it up, um, this is just a movement started by a French guy called Jean Dubuffet, really sort of ahead of its time. Um, if you've heard of the Shags or Daniel Johnston, uh, this is on the same line musically speaking. No, not musically speaking, but this concept. The concept, yeah. Conceptually Same speaking, concept. they're from Belgium yeah. and they're on Born Bad Records, which I visited in France, and that's where I saw this record. And the guy behind the counter hit me to this record, and I, I had to, to buy it in the end, but I didn't buy it at the time I ordered it. Uh, Born Bad Records, there, Paris, great job. If you're watching Born Bad Records, fucking love you. Um, Tapping is clapping. <laughs> that's the name of the record. Okay, we are going to play this, this one here, Tuxedo Moon, uh, wrong side, Tuxedo Moon, band from, uh, American band, a post-punk, really fantastic band, demonstration copy, not for resale, uh, 
one of the most original American post-punk bands, really, by far. Really kind of like um, a kind of a what magazine or a pub group or something like that of, of, of America. Really, really uh, you know, close in spirit to Peribu and things like that. You know, Devo again. Uh, Tuxedo and Californian band on the same label as the residents, uh, Ralph. Uh, label mates, friends of the residents. I was talking about residents, so it's a good segue. And to finish off with, we were just playing this record before we made the video, which is a great record. What is it? Barney Weil and Mushti 2. Mushy, mushy too. Bad. Too many why? Uh, too many rums. I can't even speak. <laughs> mushy, shufty too. Shufty too. Shufty too. <laughs> but we're, we're talking about the word shufty, which means you have a look. You know, you have a shufty. Mushy too. Shufty too. Um, mushy too. So what is what is shufty too? Well, I've got no idea. It's good. It's a French jazz record <laughs> with African pygmy. Sort of chanting in between. Fucking weird, if you ask me. But anyway. No, it's very cool. I heard this first at Campo's joint. He, he had it. Great sleeve. He said to me, Oh, you know, Mush, he's a great record. He was right. Campo, you're right. You're wrong on Asia, but you're right on this. <laughs> no, this is good. <laughs> this is really good. Anyway, uh, this is Christian. I I hope you, you dig meeting him. Uh, he might make his own videos. Who knows? He's got a Maybe great collection. Day. Maybe one day. He's he's got a he's got a quite a quite a collection. I go to his house and we pull records, and uh, it's cool. We it's good to have someone that you can relate to in real life. This is the point. This is the thing. Yeah. We, we 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 see each other at work every day, and every day go. Well, what did you buy the weekend? Oh, I bought this. Oh, well, I got this. Oh, oh, look what I got in the mail. Oh, ooh, I got this. And oh, oh, no, I didn't get that Asian in the mail. No. Get that in the mail. <laughs> That's not its thing. Um, oh, I got talk, talk in the mail. Oh, talk, talk. Anyway, that's what we do. We're just uh, doing lunch break. We just talk yeah. about records. People at work look at us thinking they're fucking loonies, really. I mean, no, they want to be part of it. They do. They just. You know, they're just not cool enough. No, no, <laughs> they're all nerds. The point of the story is it's good to have real life people to talk to about music. As opposed to robots. That's right. You know, like you, you people, you're robots. <laughs> talking to you. Yeah. Nah. You know. Hello, uh, Campo and James Buttery and uh, Champ Sound. It's nice to make a video and be part of this little thing. For, Respect for time, for to all three or something. of them, you know. Mm. Buttery. You know, the whitest man alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's no white champion. Buttery. We love you. Um, Kempo, <laughs> you know. The boldest man alive. <laughs> I'm as bold as we like to join. <laughs> um, good bloke. Good Top bloke. bloke. Top bloke. Good bloke. Good cook. You know, good cook. <laughs> Although you need a bit of meat in your diet. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And then Champ Sound. What champ. a dude. What a champ. Yeah. Big time. You know? Big time. Champ. Just like sharp as fuck. You know. But funny. Anyway, VC, there you go. It's us, Big Star, and <clears throat> him, me, the bozo next to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we are leaving now. <laughs>